Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from Northlight Images and um, this is one of my series of short book review videos which I look at some of the books that um, I've reviewed at more length on the Northlight site and ones that I've found have genuinely helped my photography. Now this one is actually about a series of books uh, from Ammonite Press and they're called 52 Assignments and the ones I've got here is uh, Landscape, Street Photography and Experimental Photography. Now, 52 assignments, well, 52 weeks a year, you get the general idea, uh, one assignment a week or whatever, how you feel in dipping into them. Now, I've noticed that these, um, they're arranged, they, they vary quite a bit in the complexity of them. They tend to be short chunks covering a subject, an aspect of photography, an idea in photography, something like that. They have some tips, an example or two, and some text explaining what's the whole aim of it, what you're trying to achieve, and how you might take it further. Um, because any photographer I've ever spoken to about this will say that sometimes you get bored, you don't feel like well, take, taking photos. Now, I've you know, done some videos and written about things that inspire me, reasons I might get out and go and take some photos. But, you know, sometimes you just need a bit of a nudge. And um, these, despite seeming somewhat trite to some eyes, are actually useful if you think about them seriously. Uh, you won't, I'm going to say, find 52 great ideas for you in each book. You will find some. Uh, I would be surprised if somebody wouldn't find anything of use in this. Uh, some require more effort than others. Um, for example, in the experimental one, um, ones involving film. Now, I used to shoot film years and years ago, but for me, film is something I did in the 20th century. Um, I shoot digital now, and every time I think of doing film again, I'm reminded that I've done this. And what inspires me now is the things I can do with digital imaging and printing and stuff like that, as opposed to darkroom work. Now, if you've never experienced film, if you've never been in a darkroom and seen a black and white image appear on a sheet of paper in a developer tray, um, then it's really worth doing. It's something you will remember the first time you ever see a print just appear as if by magic on a sheet of paper. It is something quite special. Um, and not just because I did it years and years ago and it was done like that, but people say the same thing now. Um, I would just say that it's something to do, something to do for interest, and then, well, you know, it, it's not something that, as a commercial photographer, I have any real use for anymore. But anyway, as I say, some of, some of the suggestions here do require more, rather more effort. Uh, the example, print your photos. Whoa. Um, I've written and tested stuff a lot on printing, and yes, I agree. Um, but print your photos. There's a bit more than a week's assignment, I'm going to say. But anyway, start off with the uh, landscape book. Um, I say these are put together, um, various authors have done them as a series by Ammonite Press. Now this one, um, I like the landscape one. Uh, it's got lots of little ideas, lots of little something. And when I was out recently up in the uh, Northumberland coast in the UK, I didn't have it with me, but I know some of the things I thought about taking were influenced by ideas I'd seen in the book. Now, very much depends on where you live. Um, I live in the middle of the UK. I live in a big city. Uh, I can travel into the country, so there are things to do. Um, I particularly enjoy visiting the coast. I grew up on the coast, so uh, like most people, so you miss the sea after a while. But yeah, landscape photography, very nice. Street photography. Now, this is getting a bit, way, a bit further away from my comfort zone. Street photography, ideally, and um, there are loads of ideas in here, you need to plan it and organise it a bit. Uh, just going out and thinking, I don't know, just go and do some street photography today and take some pictures. Yeah, you may get some good pictures, but they don't necessarily have much to connect them together. Um, hence the idea of putting together projects for this. Now, projects is a bit of a dirty word for me for you know, for, as a working photographer, because when I hear photographers talk about their latest project, uh, I read that as a, a shorthand for lack of paying work. 
Now, yes, I do my own photography as well, but I'm, I'm loath to grandly describe it as a project. Perhaps that's why street photography has never been more than a passing interest for me. But there are lots of interesting ideas in here, some of which I did try. Um, as I say, less impact pack for my own photography than that, but lastly, experimental photography. Now this covers all kinds of things. Um, macro, cheap lenses, using filters, all, all kinds of effects and stuff, and different ways of creating images of a scanner, for example. What I would say is don't approach this from the idea of I'm trying to make great photos that will look great on the wall. Some of the examples you produce will look completely naff at the time you take them and produce them. And when you look at them two or three weeks later, they will still look awful. But that's not the point. It is having a go, experimenting, trying different things. Just trying to get you to think of different ways of what images mean to you, how you create images, how you process images. Now, for me, obviously, as a commercial photographer, I'm always looking for things that might help something I can sell as a, as a business, because it's what puts food on the table. Um, so I do stuff like this. One, because I find it interesting, and two, because it gives me ideas. Example would be from years ago when I started experimenting with macro photography, making my own macro lenses. Now, I've got articles on the North Light site about this, about uh, reversing lenses and using old lenses and you know, various tricks like that. But that turned into paying work. Um, I still, however, enjoy just playing with photography stuff and it is just that um, these books are meant not to be a prescribed course of so you do all these and you you get marked for them and things like that um, I got no interest in that sort of stuff but they're meant to be enjoyable uh, they're meant to give you ideas make you think and sometimes you do get just a bit stuck um, happens to me um, I was one day a disk drive failed in one of our servers, so I pulled the lid off and did practice some macro photography, taking photographs of the internal shiny metal surfaces. Now, if you've ever photographed metallic objects, you'll know that photographing shiny metallic objects is quite tricky. You need to master lighting, exposure, all kinds of things. And this, this is a stacked picture as well, so stacked focus. That's the kind of playing, that's the kind of experimental stuff. I mean, there are all kinds of things in these books here. So um, if you're at a loss or if you know a photographer who's at a loss for things to do, these are the kind of books that, uh, you yeah, know, nice little present just to give somebody a nudge. Anyway, hope you find these um, short reviews of interest. Uh, please let me know in the comments. There's links there to uh, more detail about the books and whatever. And uh, if you found it interesting, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.